They call him Eminem, and no, he has nothing to do with the candy. His real name is Marshall Mathers, a white rapper whose controversial lyrics tread in the dangerous waters of misogyny and bigotry. I spoke with Eminem, who has no connection with the candy, on the set of his new film, Eight Mile. Now, you have been criticized as a, and I quote, a misogynist, homophobe with a potty mouth attitude. Man, I know haters got a diss, but I'm just gonna keep doing what I do, you know, nonstop, 24 7. So you claim no culpability, no responsibility to your fan base? Look, people be putting a lot on me, right? But I ain't gonna hear that, because I'm just living, you know, my life. And ain't nobody gonna stop how I do that. Now, in your song, Bad Influence, you say, don't be sure of it. I don't promote violence, I just encourage it. Now, what effect <laughs> that kind of lyric has on impressionable young people? Damn, I, all I'm doing is preaching, all right? And preaching reality like y'all do on the Nizus. And why don't you check this? I got something called freedom of speech, right? I mean, people were bagging on Martin Luther King back in the day, but should we have shut his ass down? Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> There's really no comparison between the two of you. Martin Luther King Jr. never went around promoting gay bashing or violence against women. Yeah, he was too busy banging bitches outside his marriage. Oh, the bridge there, boy. <laughs> you know the King family very well. They're my peeps. You feel me, dog? Chill, sucker. All I'm saying is I write what I know. Yeah, but all you nizzo is hate. And ten-year-olds be hearing your albums, oh, biatch. I call CDs, Grandpa, and Newsflash. I'd rather watch 2020 Downtown than 60 minutes. Let me tell you what, boy. It's gonna take me less than 60 seconds to bring your shit, Nick, to an M&M. Uh, oh, boy, uh, I didn't mean you any disrespect, sir. Did you just call me boy Q-tip? Uh, no, no, Mr. Bradley. No, I think you did. I think you <laughs> did. And you ain't nothing but a bug eyed punk ass cracker. Now, uh, hold on there, sir. I, I see no reason for you to make a personal attack on my character. Now, I'm taking off my glasses, bro. That's step one. Come on, character? Oh, this bitch be talking about character? You got about as much character as a pile of hot summer dog dookie. I don't mean you any disrespect, sir. Just please don't hurt me. I killed a man once when I was on assignment in Cambodia. <laughs> trying to get all up in my grill when I was interviewing Pol Pot. I had to take out an ink pen, shove it up his nose, clear all up through his brain. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Say it again, Slim. <laughs> I said I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> This week, the whole world is thinking about a war with Iraq. Andy Rooney has got his mind on Gwyneth Paltrow. Have you ever noticed how many public events Gwyneth Paltrow shows up at? I don't know about you, but my only free time is on the weekends, which I spend cleaning out my garage and taking my Parkinson's medicine. I don't have Parkinson's, but I take the medicine so I don't get it. Gwyneth Paltrow seems to be everywhere. Here she is in London at the premiere of Knockaround Guys. Here she is again two days later in Croatia on the yacht of her friend Valentino. Getting to all these places must take its toll on her mind and body. So why does she do it? I have a theory. I think she's crazy and craves publicity the way the Irish crave booze. <laughs> women are like that. They're all crazy bitches. If we didn't need women to procreate, we could use the meat from their bodies to feed homeless men. <laughs> Don't you just hate getting pushed around by a Negro? What? That ain't nothing compared to getting your neck snapped by one pork. Don't you just hate it when your lungs collapse? I can't breathe. 